<laughs> Good evening. Welcome <laughs> to Bradville Can Do Better for the ABC. I'm Janine Kitson, and before I begin tonight, I just need to clarify that this is not an ABC Friends event. This is a Bradfield Can Do Better event. And um, some of you may know that I have been the past convener of Northern Suburbs of Sydney branch of ABC Friends, and even on the committee of ABC Friends, New South Wales and ACT. But I've stepped down from both of these positions in April this year, 2021. And why have I done that? Well, I made the decision that I wanted to make a difference for the ABC in a different way. And that's by being over ambitious and um, a bit cheeky to say, I really want to stand as an independent candidate for the seat of Bradfield at the next federal election. And we don't know when that will be, possibly next year in 2022. So firstly, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respect to the Daramurrugal or Darug people and the Gurungai people on whose land I meet tonight. I also wish to pay my respect to all traditional owners from wherever you may be tonight. I honour their stories, their traditions, their culture, and I commit to truth-telling treaty and a voice to build a just and inclusive future for our First Nations people. This is where Bradfield is, and you can see the yellow arrow pointing to it in the northern suburbs of Sydney. And it basically includes the suburb from Chatswood to Hornsby and Asquith, as well as suburbs of Normanhurst and Castle Cove. In a minute, uh, I would like to show you a video, a short video about a protest that was held outside Paul Fletcher's election office, the current member for Bradfield, who is also the Minister for Communication that is responsible for the ABC. Now this protest was held in late June, 2020, and it happened shortly after the managing director of the ABC, David Anderson, announced up to 250 jobs were going to be cut across every division of the ABC as a result of the $80 million cuts to the ABC's budget from the indexation pause. Now at that time, I was the convener of the Northern Suburbs of Sydney branch of ABC Friends. And the committee decided that we had no choice. We had to hold a snap protest outside Mr. Fletcher's electorate office in Linfield. And the video reflects our shock, our anger, and our disbelief that our local member of parliament had failed his constituents by proceeding with these brutal cuts when so many of his constituents had signed petitions, written letter after letter, made phone calls to his office, indeed begged Mr. Fletcher not to proceed with these horrific cuts to the ABC. Oh, if you love the ABC, we are here in Bradfield because Mr. Fletcher is our member. This is a safe Liberal electorate. The community of Bradfield love their ABC. I mourn the loss of the ABC that was before Minister Fletcher got his hands on it. Mr. Fletcher, are you up there? You're the communications minister, but you can't communicate with your electorate. Minister Fletcher, you are wrong. You've taken away $84 million and you have given the ABC no choice but to sack 250 people. We are over the cuts. Restore the ABC to a well-funded, strong and independent national broadcaster. The ABC does not take advertisement and is answerable to nobody except the people of Australia. He has not listened to us. He has not heard the hundreds of people who have rung the ABC. It's got to happen now.
Now, I believe that the ABC is very important in the electorate of Bradfield. And I say that for three reasons. Firstly, Mr. Fletcher is the Minister for Communications. He is responsible for the ABC. And I say he has a duty of care to protect the ABC and to ensure it is strong, well-funded and independent. And we need to hold him to account for this. Secondly, even though Bradfield electorate is a very safe liberal seat, its residents highly value, trust and treasure the ABC and want it to be strong, well-funded and independent. And finally, the Bradfield electorate actually has a tradition of defending the ABC. Hmm. I'm now going to introduce Corin Fairburn Bass, a resident of Bradfield. This is the portrait she painted of her late husband, Walter Bass, who was the founder of the Friends of the ABC. Hmm. Let's now hear from Corin, who will share her story about how four people sat down in her lounge room one day in 1976 hmm. and then agreed to stand up and begin a movement to defend the ABC. Thank you, Janine, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'll tell you how this happened. Um, now, I know I'm speaking to the converted, but I want you just for a moment to imagine your life without the ABC, an ABC perhaps which never existed, or perhaps an ABC starved out of existence, no longer able to entertain us, or to be there in times of danger like fires and floods of last year. There's nothing there to give us the information we need to help make sense of our world and beyond. No ABC TV, no Radio National, no in-depth analyses of political machinations and social problems that we all face at times. No four corners. Or what about a once strong and independent national broadcaster forced into submission and made independent on and made dependent on commercials for its life support, but no longer a broadcaster we can trust. It doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Well, <clears throat> it was from this bleak future possibility during a discussion one Saturday afternoon in 1976 with our old friends Hans and Faith Bandler about what could be done for the ABC, that the idea of forming an organized public support group came about. The ABC was facing further funding cuts by the Fraser government then, and something had to be done about it. And so a public meeting was called in Adzac House. We agreed to set that up. We went ahead and did it. Uh, Anzac House is in the centre of Sydney and uh, it, in a very, very full hall and with a lot of passion and enthusiasm, the first Friends of the ABC was formed with my husband Walter as the founding president. He'd been a, a rusted on ABC follower since he was a little boy. Uh, in fact, he was always very proud of having been an Argonaut from the time he was 10. <laughs> and later in life, near the end of his life, he wrote, um, he wrote about this. This is what he said, I quote, it was a wonderful program, the, the Argonauts for children, which is still fondly remembered by many of my generation. And it instilled in me a love, lifelong love of the ABC, which would have a profound effect on my life in the future. Well, he didn't know at the age of 10, of course, what was going to happen, but he was quite right. And of course, there were many, many people in 1976 and before who shared his belief in the vital importance of having an independent national broadcaster. And for the next 20 years, he and they fought fiercely to defend the ABC and always lobbying for further funding. And from that first meeting in 1976, 
there are now well over 30 branches of the Friends and still growing all over the country. And as we all know, the ABC faces ever more drastic funding cuts and is being pared down to the bone. Political parties and commercial interests dislike its independence and its journalistic investigations and analyses and our insistence on keeping it free from commercial interests. But the ABC reaches out to people in every far corner of this country and it has something for everyone. It belongs to all of us. It's indispensable and its imp importance can't be overstated. Neither can the thousands of friends who work hard on its behalf. You are also indispensable. So Janine, I think I speak for all of us in wishing you success with your campaign to keep the ABC alive and well and independent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, thank you, thank you so much, Corin, for sharing that very impassioned um, and beautiful words about how important the ABC is, not just for Bradfield, but for the nation, you're quite right. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Margaret Reynolds, uh, the inaugural national president of ABC Friends. Margaret is, Margaret is a distinguished teacher and educator and was involved in establishing the kindergarten Head Start program in Townsville, Northern Queensland in 1967, which was one of Australia's first Aboriginal preschools. Margaret was elected and served as a Queensland Labor Senator from 1983 to 1999. Hello. During. Oh, I have to, I'm, I'm on a Zoom. Okay. I'll just say that again, Margaret was elected and served as a Queensland Labor Senator from 1983 to 1999. During this time, she served as a Minister for Local Government and a Minister for the Status of Women. This photograph shows Margaret standing in front of the suffrage banner that she was instrumental in returning to the Australian Parliament around 1988 from London. This 1908 banner that reads Commonwealth of Australia, Trust the Women Mother, as I have done, was proudly carried by Australian and New Zealand suffragettes at a London procession in 1911, calling on the United Kingdom government to grant their women the vote, something that had already happened for Australian and New Zealand women. Margaret has been a passionate peace advocate, arguing for disarmament and seeking peaceful alternatives to war. In 1997, Margaret represented Australia at the UN General Assembly in New York. And this photograph shows her standing with other UN delegates and Kofi Annan, who was the then United Nations Secretary General. After leaving parliament in 1999, Margaret lectured in Australian politics international relations and human rights at the University of Queensland. She later chaired the Australian Centre for Excellence in Local Government at the University of Technology in Sydney. And from 2004 to 2012, she was the CEO of the National Disability Services in Tasmania and contributed to developing the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Some may have seen Margaret being interviewed on the ABC programs, Ms. Representative. Welcome Margaret Reynolds, National President of ABC Friends. Hello everyone and thank you Janine for that introduction. Uh, what a wonderful occasion this is. Janine, you have brought together uh, the founder of the uh, Friends of the ABC. Corinne, I would just love your story of how you and Walter and Hans and Faith Bander got together in 1976, 
foreseeing the problems that the ABC was going to uh, face over many years and that you, just the four of you, sitting in a lounge room in Taramara uh, should have uh, started a movement that now involves, uh, we estimate, well over 60,000 Australians. And that's from our social media statistics. We have, we have many, many members and we have many, many supporters. So thank you, Corinne, and uh, thank you, Walter, and thank you, um, Faith Bander and uh, Hans. I, the other coincidence about tonight, which I think is, is fascinating, Australia's a very small place, really. In 1976, I was living in Townsville. I was a, a young teacher. And uh, who would have thought that all these years later, I would come back to be with you, Corinne, in talking about the importance of the ABC. I knew Hans and Faith Bandler. Faith Bandler was a guest speaker at a Townsville University event we held in 1967. We invited Faith to come to Townsville. He was just a magnificent speaker about what should follow the referendum. The referendum uh, to include uh, Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders uh, in, uh, in uh, the census and to ensure that federal government took responsibility for funding programs. Uh, had been successful and wanted to know, well, what's going to happen now? And Faith came and talked to us. And so it's wonderful for me tonight to remember Faith, remember Hans. I visited them in their Taramara uh, sitting room, um, probably early in the 1970s, uh, just a few years after Faith had come to North Queensland. Isn't Bradfield lucky? Bradfield has the opportunity to change the direction of how this government, through the Minister Paul Fletcher, is treating our city. He is the minister responsible for communications. He is responsible for the well-being of the ABC. And yet he seems to have done nothing but underfunded and directed funding across from the ABC, from public broadcasting, across to the commercial sector. For some reason that I can't understand, he thinks he should fund Rupert Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch's newspapers and Sky News. Why? They're com a, they're commercial, B, Rupert Murdoch is a millionaire, probably a billionaire by now. And uh, Paul Fletcher is responsible for public broadcasting, not commercial broadcasting. So aren't you lucky to have someone like Janine Kitson, who has worked so hard <laughs> to raise the issue affecting uh, the ABC? Because so often people don't, they don't necessarily follow the detail of what's going on in politics and in our world. But fortunately, um, Bradfield had Janine Gibson to set up an ABC Friends branch and to be there outside Paul Fletcher's office and in, <laughs> excuse me, and in his office on a number of occasions to try to get him to change. Sorry, not COVID, just a tabsy cough. Um, so um, I want to <laughs> congratulate and thank Janine for her wonderful efforts on behalf of ABC Friends. And now she has stepped down to actually challenge Paul Fletcher in the next election. And wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if a minister could lose his seat because he didn't value and treat the ABC as an essential service. This wouldn't be the first time, Janine. This did happen in Bass 
a number of years ago when uh, the then minister was the member for Bass and he lost his seat in Bass. Certainly it was a, a marginal seat, but he lost his seat. And years later, he said, if only I'd done more for the ABC, I may not have lost the seat. So the voters of Bradfield have a wonderful opportunity to support Janine and to keep raising the issue of the ABC and how important it is in our democracy. Because I think some people love the ABC for the entertainment. Some people love the ABC because their children love the children's programs or their young people uh, love Triple J. But we must never forget that the ABC is absolutely essential for our democracy because it is independent and it is uh, there to ensure that it monitors and tackles any questions that government does not necessarily want uh, to be answered or to be fully investigated. And it's not just government, corporations and others that contribute to our society. And the ABC is our voice and it's the way we can have faith that our democracy is alive and well and that we cannot just be dictated to by those in power, be they government or be they in large corporations. So tonight, uh, I just want to run through a, a few things that are going to be happening between now and uh, the next election, whenever that is. ABC Friends has been working for five years now to keep raising these questions of the ABC's independence, the ABC's funding, the ABC's role. And so many Australians value the ABC. But sadly, some political representatives, members of parliament, senators in parliament, they, they're very dismissive of the ABC. And so what we have been doing is encouraging uh, voters to go and talk to their local member or senator and to explain just what is happening to the ABC and how its funds have been significantly reduced, not just a small, a small reduction, significantly reduced. And uh, at, by the end of this year, the ABC will have lost up to a thousand professional staff. Now, an organisation cannot lose that number of professionals over a five, six year period without it affecting its content, its programming. It does a magnificent job despite this, it could and should be doing so much more. So ABC Friends National will be running a campaign through our social media, through our website, our Facebook page, and other um, accounts we have to reach out to voters to say, when you go to vote, think of your democracy and think of the ABC in at its vital role in our democracy. Now, we all had loyalties when it comes to um, who we want in Parliament. And it really is up to us to make sure that our member of Parliament, whoever they are, is someone we can trust with the, the well-being of the ABC. And that's why uh, our focus is going to be on lobbying parliamentarians, lobbying political parties, and ensuring that voters understand just how important the ABC is, how important it is that voters uh, say, we want our ABC protected. Because if things keep going the way they have for the last uh, five, six years, Joe Hockey's first budget was the turning point. I think you might have remembered a certain person who was then Prime Minister saying, no cuts to the ABC. And then the first budget, 
That's exactly what happened. We've seen a lot of political interference in the ABC. We've seen people appointed to the board and some of them, I'm sure, their heart's in the right place. They're trying to do their best. Certainly, uh, I very much respect and value the role of Ita Butros. But some people have been appointed merely because they're friends of a, of a, a government minister or even a prime minister. So we've got to do better. There is supposed to be an independent process and we want to see uh, these processes locked in for the future and proper funding locked in for the future so that the ABC can continue its vital role. Just to finish on, you, I, I thought in preparing to talk to you tonight, I couldn't help but think we're all, well, you're facing lockdown. We're, we have rumours of lockdown in Tasmania, but we haven't got there yet. But uh, certainly everyone is around the country is very uneasy about the slow rollout of the vaccine and about the, the impact of the Delta variant. And when you turn on your television, uh, what do you see? If you're lucky, you see Norman Swan. If you're unlucky, you see a whole lot of arms with band-aids on them. Now, I'm not sure why that's going to help any of us. I would rather see Norman Swan and listen to his informed, reassuring health discussion about how we can best look after ourselves. So thank you very much, Knight. Uh, congratulations, Janine. We all think you're wonderful. We'll be right there on election day, willing you to win. And uh, I look forward uh, to perhaps visiting you before the election to keep spreading that message of uh, hope for the ABC in Bradfield. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Margaret, for that really uh, powerful insight that you've given, and not only that about the movement of the ABC Friends, which really uh, Corin outlined how it began, and now we see your leadership, and it is a force, and we are putting that up as a really key environmental, um, key electoral issue, because it's too important to lose, and we really have to stay strong. So thank you so much. Now, this is a wonderful opportunity now that if you have a question, you may ask Margaret um, by going and um, finding the a reactions button and pressing that up and putting your hand up. So I'm just having a look to see if there are any questions. So we're still waiting. Um, for a question, but while we're waiting for a question, I just want to ask you something, Margaret. One of the things that worries me is that um, the minister and the prime minister, in fact, made the statement that there are no cuts to the ABC. And it's quite outrageous that he that has been said. Um, and they, do you think, do you, what do you think if that is going to be exposed well, and the Australian public will just reject that. I think fortunately, I think fortunately, there's been so much work done by the parliamentary library, by independent commentators and that detail the extent of cuts to the ABC. So I think many thinking Australians understand that you can do anything with a set of numbers. And I think that's what the government has done. They've fudged mm. What, mm. what they see as how they're managing the, um, the funds for the ABC. But we know that uh, David Anderson wouldn't retrench staff just for fun. He has to retrench staff because he hasn't got the dollars. And there's so many things that the um, ABC would like to be doing, 
anything big happening because the funds aren't there. So um, there's a very good paper that the Parliamentary Library has put out. And uh, I also had a letter recently from the Department of Communications. And even they seem to be backing off a bit on this no cuts to the ABC. The, ABC, the minister and the prime minister will never do that. But the department did seem to be finding its words very carefully to put the situation in a clear context. Uh, we're getting some comments in the chat box. Would those people like to turn those into questions while we're here? I have a question, Janine. Helen. All right, Helen, yes. A, a question to Margaret. Um, what role does the parliamentary friends of the ABC play in reality? And is there an updated group of them? The last time I looked, it was February 2020. So I'm just wondering two things. What's the role? Are they active? Yeah. Look, the pa parliamentary friends group is a very good group of committed parliamentarians, but because of COVID, they haven't uh, had the opportunity to meet very often. I mean, last year they scarcely sat in the parliament. That's why that document is, is still 2020. I did receive another one uh, at the end of this year, but I was told it was not up to date and it would be changing this year. Uh, we met I guess the parliamentary friends, there are many friendship groups in the parliament and parliamentary friends of the ABC is just one of them. They can be very active and they can do a great deal or they can just be there when they're needed. When and I, I think- um, Margaret, yeah, I'm sorry. When I questioned our previous local member at North Sydney, about the parliamentary friends. He was chair of the SBS parliamentary friends and um, the ABC friends, to his knowledge, hadn't met parliamentary friends group, and I know there's lots of them. ABC parliamentary friends had not met for over 12 months. And that was in uh, July, 2019. Yes, right. yes. Well, we, we have, um, thanks to Andrew, we'll... Okay. Andrew Wilkie has played a very good role in mobilising them. I think in 2017 to about 2019, they did very little. We met them ourselves just recently. We met them in May and there would have been about 16 uh, at the meeting with us. And they were, you know, supportive, said and did all the right things. But Margaret, we've now think, got three. I think thank you for that. Um, we've got one from Maxine, and then we'll follow it by Julie and then Ross. So, Maxine, um, over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I just despair that this government will ever listen, they just don't want to listen. And I've written a ranty email off to Paul Fletcher this last week about so many things, but. They just, how, how do you get through that they don't care? They just don't you're in, care. Uh, you're absolutely right. You're in very good company. He doesn't answer our letters. He doesn't answer Janine's letters. He doesn't even answer letters from Ita Butros, the chair of the board of the ABC. So, you're absolutely right. We, we, we are with, we are unfortunate enough to have a minister who just doesn't care what we think. He's getting on with what he wants to do, mm. which is supporting Rupert Murdoch. That's why we need Janine. <laughs> yes, well, mm. you'll be getting my vote. <laughs> right, now we have got... Thank Julie. you. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. Hi, Margaret, Julie Ross. Um, I'm a high school principal in Sydney, currently level four in lockdown. Um, 
and the ABC educational programs at this point in time have been absolutely invaluable for us as educators programming and delivering content online. I'm wondering how we can use this moment as leverage to um, increase, I guess, the understanding in the community of how important the ABC is at these times. Mm. Yes, and we have, and we will continue to do so. Um, the ABC has been vital in the bushfires of of 2019, vital mm -hmm. throughout COVID, vital for education programs and a number of other areas. Every time we get the chance, uh, we put into the Bushfire Royal Commission, we, we say how important the ABC is. We even got a, a um, motion through the Senate congratulating the ABC on its work during bushfires. But it's people like us who are listening, not necessarily the government. And that's why we've got this strategy of going out to the community and saying, are you getting what you want from your parliamentarian for the ABC? Thank you, Margaret, um, about the education. That was a great question, wasn't it? Um, oh. We've got Judy now. Um, Judy, would you like to ask your question you need to unmute we can't hear you sorry helps to have the microphone in the right place um, <clears throat> I was wondering what interaction there has been or what support you've had from the independent and non-major party members of parliament federal parliament particularly given that a number of the independents are rural MPs yeah. who well, one or two Look, of whom I know, and the, I know they appreciate the ABC fully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, the the independents have been excellent, and um, uh, certainly the independents in the Senate in uh, have been particularly important in protecting the ABC, just because of the way legislation may or may not get through the Senate because of the numbers, whereas in the House of Representatives, uh, it can be different because the government has control. But yes, uh, and uh, ABC Friends has said on more than one occasion how good the independents are. And uh, I understand that there's quite a movement. I mean, Janine is, is just one independent running in the next election. And I understand there are a number running in, in uh, uh, government held seats in Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. So uh, I think that message is well and truly through that the, you know, you've got a better chance, you've got a better chance with your independence unless you really get a strong commitment uh, from a particular political party. The Greens have been very good, of course. Sarah Hanson Young is outspoken and is constantly questioning. Uh, the ABC uh, questioning in Senate estimates about funding for the ABC. Thank you, Margaret. And, and now, I'm sorry, Ross, you had your hand up. Ross McGowan yes. from the ABC Friends Central Coast. Yes, thanks, Janine, and uh, thank you, Margaret. Um, I think you sort of hinted at my question, um, which was concerning the ALP. And although I've I've heard uh, Michelle Rowland a couple of times, and she's delivered a, a quite a, an effective critique of the uh, the government's performance not much has come in the way of firm commitments aside from restoring the 80 million dollars which of course will help enormously but that's not really enough so uh, uh, can you um, uh, tell us of any other commitments the ALP may have made aside from that no but we're working on it Look, the ALP is is like any uh, is like the uh, uh, either of the other major parties. They they do things for their own reasons, and uh, some of us are left scratching our heads as to why they do them. I think the ALP will commit more before the next election. It won't be for our want of trying, but I think. 
I think their view at the moment is that they don't want to be seen. Sorry, it's just a bit of no. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know where that came from. That interruption. Um, so look, I think uh, I think the ALP will do more, but we need to push them. So any of you who have any influence with your local Labor members, it's all very well for them to say we love the ABC, but we want to, to know what they're going to do. Uh, and uh, they're, they're just a bit lacklustre in policy terms. Uh, they say the right thing, they criticise the government, that's fine. But we want to know what they will do differently to protect and build uh, rebuild the strength of independent public broadcasting. Um, th thank you for that question. So we're really getting quite a range about the politics from independence, now Labor, and the pressure that needs to be put on all of these, um, you know, different political parties and independents, because um, that's what's going to take to really make the difference in the ABC. I'm just looking to see if there's anybody else with another question. Um, one of the things that um, concerns me is that the Liberal Party still have on their books the motion to privatise the ABC. And um, one of the things that we, uh, we tried as a, um, a branch, a former, when I was on the branch of the Northern Suburb of Sydney, was to write to him and ask him to rescind, the, the Paul Fletcher, to rescind the motion that the Liberal Party would privatise the ABC and of course um, they were saying oh it's nothing to do with us as a political party but uh, I think that's totally unacceptable. Margaret um, there are still pressures yeah. within the Liberal Party to, um, to even do worse things yeah. I believe. Yeah yeah look we're, we're expecting the Victorian Liberal Party to put forward a motion when they're out of lockdown to privatise uh, no, well, they're, they're for privatisation, but they start by having pay for iView. And if that, uh, we've already put some, some feelers out there, uh, and many people have written in to the Prime Minister and to others. I think we can squash at that. <laughs> but whether we can get a... Um, a receding of that motion. The other thing I think we should remember is there are good people in the National Party. We've had very good meetings with Darren Chester and uh, with a couple of other, Malcolm McCormack. And of course, we were so pleased with our efforts in reaching out to those nationals. And five minutes later, they were gone and Barnaby and his crew were in. So. It is, I mean, I think my message is it's worth pushing anybody. I think almost anybody, might be a couple of exceptions, but uh, um, don't give up on your local member and say, oh, they're just this or they're just that. It's better to keep at them because when it comes to elections, when it comes to votes, get something in writing from them. Uh, that they will take the ABC. Margaret, I've got a question, uh, Janine, if I may. Uh, Mar Margaret, uh, I'm Lindsay Somerville from the ABC Northern Suburbs, and I've set up a meeting with Fletcher for the 20th of August. Hopefully it'll go ahead. Do you have any suggestions about what we should talk about or ask about? And also, has there been any response to the Green Paper that uh, Fletcher put out and is now closed. Yeah. yeah, there hasn't been, there's been some response to the Green Paper. Ask him about that, but yeah. also ask him to rescind, get the motion rescinded about privacy. Right. Any, any other suggestions you might have? Well, just ask, ask him 
what are his plans to update transmission services? Yes. Um, I can arrange for you to, um, you probably should try to talk to Sue Pinnock in Adelaide. She's been doing our, all our work on transmission because what we decided some time ago was that we were always on about funding and privatization and we needed a new practical message. And of course, as you know, uh, the failure of transmission during the bushfires was you know, yeah. catastrophic in many circumstances. So I would push him on transmission. You see, it was privatized by um, John Howard, oh, no. which means that which means that you know, a vital, well, it's like the NBN all over again, but a, a vital network of communication is in the hands of the private sector. It should be run by government. And if it, if it isn't run by government, at least government should have some oversight of whether or not it is being properly managed uh, by uh, the private sector. Yes. Thank you, and of course, all they try to do is push repairs into the ABC. Yeah. Yes, I know. I'm aware of the mm. problems in the in the in the ABC with the transmission and the problems they have in getting those people mm. to fulfil their contractual agree agreements, which is uh, exactly. un unforgivable. And what, what's happened? And I I, I, mm. I canvass that in the green paper as well. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you mm. for that really uh, important issue uh, because really. ABC is an essential service. It's a national security issue with communication and the failure and the privatization of the transmission towers is really um, just a key issue that really needs to be taken up. Yeah. So unless there's any other questions there, we might be- I think Corinne's got a question. Corinne, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, I would like to ask Margaret this. We know that the, and she's just explained, and we know uh, that there are, are supporters of the ABC in Parliament. Um, but what actually is the, their power regarding um, uh, assisting or get, uh, pushing the ABC cause along? And what, do, what are they do? I mean, it, it's easy to be supportive, but yes. to be practical, what, what do they, they actually do, do for us? Yeah, exactly. The first step for us is getting them to say they support the ABC, but you're absolutely right. And this is very much the problem with the ALP. I mean, the ALP has come a long way in saying all the right things and being involved, but what are they going to do? Hmm. And I'm afraid this is often politics. Um, people are very happy to say, oh, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's them that's the problem. And what we've got to do as voters is turn it around and say, what will you do? And get them to write it, put in writing what they will do. Yeah. Senate does have some control because of the fine um, margin between the, the various parties. So that's where the independents in the Senate have been very influential. People like Rex Patrick, Senator Hanson Young. I mean, she's, she's not technically independent, but she's a small party. Jackie Lambie, they've been very crucial. But what we need is people within the Liberal Party and within the National Party and within the Labor Party to stand up in their party rooms and say, we've got to do more. You see, in Tasmania, we have a, a woman who is a member of parliament, a liberal member, and she's um, she says all the right things to us. Uh, I think she's even joined ABC Friends, but she's part of a government that keeps pushing the ABC down. And we've just got to be, get past that and say, look, we don't care. We don't care whether you're Labour or Liberal or National or what you are, but what will you do for the ABC? That's all we care about. Yeah. Um, 
I just, it, just, to, just to let you know, I have, um, we attended a candidates meeting at the last federal election and we asked the questions about the ABC and I have Trent Zimmerman on camera saying that he'll cross the floor if they try to privatise the ABC. So if anyone wants to use that, I have it. <laughs> and um, for those, yeah, Margaret, did you want to comment on that or? You, do you still have that? I you still have do. that on, because I think we'd like to see it and try to use it. We might use it on our media if we could. Yes, sure. It was just recorded after. Can you be in touch with Janine? Yeah. We'll get, that to you. we'll get that to you, Margaret. Thank and you. Janine. And Janine. Thanks. And so that's the great thing about having a Zoom meeting that we can get things and um, and, and find out how to help the ABC just with, through our okay. own networks and our own achievement. Thank you, Margaret, for speaking. I think um, Jenny, Jenny had a question. Jenny. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Margaret if she knew, there's a question here in the chat about um, Jackie Lambie, because uh, is she in favour of the ABC and against, do you know, and against privatisation? Because yes. I donate to her on a monthly basis because She's of the good. veterans, yeah. because of the veterans. Jackie is terrific. So I can uh, lean on her. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. She's very good. She, she, well, that's good to hear that Jackie Lambie is great for the ABC. Now, we have to finish <laughs> our questions at the moment. Sorry, we've run out of time. We were getting really getting some excellent questions. Thank you. So let's all put our hands together and clap um, our wonderful guest speakers. Thank you, Margaret, for your really thorough and insightful and uh, depth of understanding about the politics and, and just the passion of so many people trying to defend the ABC. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Corin, for sharing your moving story about a group of Bradfield residents who decided to step up and defend the ABC. And thank you, Wayne, for your expert technical support for this Bradfield Can Do Better event. Now, and I just say thank you to everyone in the audience for joining me. and. Uh, and I hope you will promote the recording of this with your friends and colleagues. And I'm going to finish, but I'm going to finish with one question. And I'm going to say, and that question is to myself, what would I do if I did win the seat of Bradfield at the next federal election? And I, well, I would do my utmost to make sure Bradfield does a lot better for the ABC. But I really believe it's time to get expert advice on how to prepare a bill to put to the Australian Parliament on depoliticizing the funding cuts to the ABC. And I would want, I would work to pass in something like an ABC guaranteed funding bill that ensures secure funding for the ABC into the future. And that it has the resources to fulfill its obligations under the ABC charter. And I would do my utmost to work to ensure our national broadcaster is restored to being a really absolutely fun foundational pillar of Australian democracy and civil society. Mm. So we now finish with some That's song good. and music um, to inspire us to keep doing our very best to defend the ABC. <laughs> I came to you tonight to say, I believe Bradfield can do so much better for the ABC, but I think every electorate across this nation can do the same and demand that every member of parliament stands up for the ABC. Thank you and good night. Thank you. <laughs> Where would we be without our ABC? That's why we stand here so proud It's not for sale, it was built to last That's why we need to say it loud Where would we be without our ABC? And everything that it means 
It's brought us drama, docos and comedy And great investigative teams But there are some who'd like to see it gone To suit their commercial end But it still stands for truth and reason And that's why we'll defend Where would we be without our ABC? We'd make it stronger if we could So just keep your grubby mitts off Cause if it goes it's gone for good so just keep your bloody grubby mitts on Cause if it goes it's gone for good